Hey Paul, you're with SAP, right? Yep. And what group do you work with at SAP? So I'm responsible for the SAP HANA and platform business for Asia Pacific Japan. Asia, Asia Pacific and Japan? Correct, okay. yes. So is there anything different in this market than the rest of the world? So I think one of the things that we see in Asia that's interesting is the adoption of in-memory technologies. So if you look at um, not just SAP's kind of data points, but IT analyst data points, it's typically growing faster, twice as fast in Asia compared to say North America. I think that's just a symptom of Asians' population. So we see you know, significant communities and populations where you know, there's a lot of data generated in retail or utilities or banking and therefore that's driving kind of this adoption of in-memory technologies to, to replace a lot of the traditional databases so we've seen before. in-memory is hotter here than other parts of the world? I think it's hotter, I think it's a hot topic everywhere. everywhere. Um, I mean look, I, I, I'm responsible for Asia so I see firsthand this market. Yeah. Um, but there's no doubt that uh, all of the analyst um, reports indicate a faster growth rate in this part of the world. And I, I do think it's because of the nature of the businesses and the data intensiveness of the businesses in Asia, particularly in India and China, where there's just huge volumes of business transactions and data that's potentially there to be analyzed. And so what are some of the benefits of being in memory versus just a traditional? So, um, I mean, the good thing about in memory is, is that the price performance has dropped significant, significantly and continues to drop. So the, the economies of putting a lot of data in memory is, is becoming you know, increasingly uh, uh, effective. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's, it's becoming more and more cost effective. Uh, and that's what's really driving customers to, you know, to use the technology. The big benefit is if you look at kind of IoT and, and social and big data is that information is only useful if you can process it in real time. So if you're a retailer and you're doing customer loyalty, you want to be able to service and personalize the experience for that customer in real time, whether that's in the branch or online or whatever the, um, you know, the mechanism that you're, you're dealing with your customers. When you can manage that in an in-memory system that just gives you so much more processing capacity compared to a traditional platform, it allows you to create that new type of real-time big data process. So in memory, would, would uh a maps application be more useful if it was in memory? Because I, I seem to be walking around Singapore yeah. in squares. Yes. Because yeah. it doesn't yeah. seem to be knowing where I am. Well, so that it, it's interesting because in, so in HANA we have many different data services. So there's the traditional transaction processing, but there's also analytical, predictive, but also then unstructured data like spatial and geospatial data that can be managed. And it, it, comes, it comes back, typically in the past, we've tended to keep that data separately in, in different systems. And therefore, the application that we use as a consumer doesn't work so well, because the, the data behind it is not real time. When you can bring all that into one in-memory system like HANA, then the whole experience in the application you build is truly real time. And, and that's really when the, the real value of the application hits, hits the consumer. And so you also handle structured and unstructured Absolutely. Con yeah. uh, data, yeah. right? Yeah, so right. whether it's, um, so, so one of the things we see as SAP, I mean, traditionally, um, we've obviously been an applications provider for many, many years. So we, we manage, you know, um, all of the world's retailers and oil and gas and utilities companies, structured data and structured business processes. I see a big divide between the data that we manage in the business applications and then this emerging big data opportunity, which is often managed separately, the unstructured information. The real value is, is when we can bring that you know, rather than two yeah, silos, yeah, bridge right. that divide and, and bring that data together in real time, yep. so that you can make that big data useful to the business process. And, and a good example, again, if I come back to the retailer, is um, if I do my customer analysis in a platform like Hadoop, which it's very geared up and cost effective at doing, I want to be able to bring that analysis into my customer relationship management business processes. Um, now, often they sit separately. Um, at SAP, we've just announced a new technology called SAP HANA Vora, and this is based on the Apache Spark specification. And this is taking our in-memory pedigree, applying that to Apache Spark to bridge this gap between business data and unstructured data. So I can do this precision analytics on in, my big data Hadoop platform. In real time. Integrated with my uh, application business process. And th this really starts to let you do some interesting things in terms of real time. And, and that's new business models, new business processes. That's Vora, V-O-R-A? Yes, V-O-R-A, S-A-P, HANA Vora. Now you can, you can use HANA Vora standalone on its own. You don't have to have an SAP HANA platform, but when you use those two together, HANA for your business data, Vora for your unstructured data, 
integrated in real time. Very, very powerful capability for doing business analytics across all your structured and unstructured information. So SAP's got quite a legacy and quite a history. So a lot of enterprise work you, you guys do with a lot of large companies. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing any industries moving quicker to data solutions like this and memory solutions? Yeah, look, in Asia, I think any any big data intensive industry is, is definitely moving faster. So in the, in the high tech industry, um, where you see a lot of manufacturing data, manufacturing yield data that can be off, what is often managed in Hadoop, but where it takes weeks and weeks to process that data, being able to bring that into Vora and, and do that in real time has huge business benefits around the, the actual manufacturing process. Retail, where you see tons of point of sales, data being analyzed to do customer loyalty, upsell, cross-sell, and customer analysis, and so on. Consumer, around things like trade promotion. Um, there's a lot of um, countries in Asia that are still deregulating their energy market. So unlike perhaps the Western world where it's already heavily deregulated, a lot of, um, like if you take Japan, they're just starting to deregulate their energy industry. Okay. And, and everything around smart meter analytics. Consumer is, is, behavior yeah, Consumer well. behavior, yeah, looking yeah. at supply and demand of energy on the grid and so on. Telco, call data records, banking, banking transactions. So whichever of those industries you look at, there's, there's a lot of data. Uh, too often it's been managed in silos. Um, so what our objective is is to bring that together, bridge that gap, to then really drive the, the real-time business insight in a single application. If we have this conversation a year from now, what will change for SAP and the data world, and specifically in Asia? Yeah, look, I think in the next 12 months we're gonna see uh, just more and more adoption of things like cloud technology. We've already seen cloud as, a, as an increasingly preferred consumption model. It's just so easy to start doing projects in the cloud versus managing your own data center. Um, so we have a capability called the HANA Cloud Platform. So this is our HANA plus our wider um, platform solutions that's available in the cloud. You can literally go to hcp.sap.com and within two minutes you're up and running with your own development environment. So it's great um, to have that for our- HCP you know, for HANA Cloud Platform? Correct, okay. hcp.sap.com. Okay. So we're seeing huge adoption of um, cloud as a consumption model. Really again, customers looking at how do I bring business value faster versus being my own data center mm -hmm. kind of organization, right? So, so, so doing what you're best at, building the business content and leaving the data center management to someone else. So I think what we'll see is just you know, more data, more big data applications will emerge. So we're seeing things like um, repeatable use cases now. So predictive maintenance, for example, in heavy asset intensive industries, connected logistics, connected manufacturing. These are big data use cases where we're packaging and creating applications, whether you deploy those on premise or in the cloud, I think we'll see more of those applications. Um, and I just think the, the adoption of cloud around IoT will just have to will have yeah. to gravitate yeah. into the cloud, just yeah. in terms of the edge and the to connectivity to the network. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We look forward to that journey and we'll work with you on that journey. Thank you very much, Thank Mike. You. Pleasure to be here.